Hey, Jacob. Oh, hey, Matt. What are we driving today? It's the bloody Polestar 2. Ah, oh, the Polestar 2. You mean the Polestar that they facelifted and actually changed really significantly? Yeah, how often do we see a facelift these days that actually has good changes? And actually, it's interesting. They've done a few cosmetic changes, but it's under the skin that this thing has essentially been almost entirely overhauled. It's gone from a front-wheel drive to a rear-wheel drive. More power, bigger battery, more range, more expensive. This thing will set you back $71,400 Australian dollars before on-road costs. And don't forget, guys, if you're looking to buy a Polestar or any other car, we can get it for you a lot cheaper. Castles.com forward slash buy and without the hassle. Who the hell wants that? All right, Jacob, let's get into the review. Let's do it. Yeah, screw hassle. So today we're going to take you for a full exterior tour of the facelifted, the updated Polestar 2. We're going to check out the interior and, of course, practicality. Then we're going to launch this thing because apparently it's faster. I think it might be. Can you tell by our reaction? Oh! And then, of course, we will give this thing lots of the sauce. We're going to drive it real hard. And we're going to answer the question, uh, is rear-wheel drive better? Yes. No sh <laughs> All right, let's do this. All righty, guys. Let's talk about the way the Polestar 2 looks. Jacob, my hands are burning. They're burning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, this, thing, this thing's pretty hot. Ooh, this thing is very sexy. Got you there, guys. It is 38 degrees, though. So that was mind. a genuine burn reaction. Was, my hands are, like, red. Red raw. Third degree. Look at this. Oh, that's new. Little insert there. It is such a gorgeous color, man. This is white. It's not white. It's, it's like a, it's off white. It's like a light bluish, grayish. It just looks amazing. The badge here is color matched as well. I love this little font. Mid-range radar. You don't get the the high range, all right? You get the mid-range. Yeah, we don't care about distant cars. You got a little camera there. I love the headlights, dude. They've got this really cool, like, Thor's hammer design to them with, you know, LED turn signals. Now, of course, this is a press car, so it's, uh, you know, full of the option packs, and this has both of them. So it's got the $3,500 pilot pack on it. That gives it adaptive cruise control, lane centering, essentially. Things that this car should really have a standard, and you do get a standard on a Tesla Model 3 and a BYD seal, but anyway. You also get these pixel headlights that are very, very bright, like matrix LEDs. You also get emergency stop assist, which I'm not sure how that differs from autonomous emergency braking. Maybe it stops faster. Can you imagine? That would be terrible. And also down the bottom, you get LED turn lights. A very worthwhile package because it really gets it to the spec you would really want. It's also got another package on it, of course. And you get a lot of stuff with that. That one I think is a bit necessary, even though it comes with things like a high efficiency heat pump, which is good for one of these things, especially in the cold. But I can't even think about the cold right now, man, because I'm getting burnt to a crisp. I cannot even imagine cold. But otherwise, the design, man, I just think it's gorgeous, especially from the front. Let us know what you guys think down in the comment section. What do you think of the way that this thing looks? Very mature. Let's check out the side. Let's do it. Again, guys, the side, it just looks phenomenal, I think. You've got these 19-inch wheels here with these very aero design to them wrapped in michelin primacy four tires and they're pretty wide as well two four fives that's pretty good you've also got a 360 camera i believe that's new now and it's also very high definition it is very high definition but it's annoying that it defaults to just the 360 camera and then you have to click for reverse camera small things which is kind of annoying mm. maybe you can set that up in the in the settings but i couldn't find it you have a polestar 2 badge here 82 kilowatt, which is the size of the battery, and 220 kilowatt, which means that it's the long range rear wheel drive. That's how much power it puts out. We'll come back to that. Keyless entry and go. Oh, well, very nice. You don't have any privacy glass, which kind of sucks because that's tinted windows and that would be very nice on a hot day like today. Just like not having this sunroof up here would be very nice on a day like today, but we'll come back to that. And otherwise it's got this really cool, just modern design to it. I love the way it looks, man. Yeah, it's very coopy, but it also looks a bit like a sedan. Yeah, it really yeah. does. Let's check out the mum. Let's do it. Alrighty, mummies and daddies, let's talk about the rump. I love the tail lights. They look really, really cool. You've got a very nice rear light bar here. It's just got that minimalism design to it, which we love to see. Very Scandinavian, isn't it, Jacob? It's very Scandinavian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You got the Polestar badge here again, color match, very cool. Down the bottom you have a bumper and otherwise that's it. Oh, this is new for 2024, Jacob. There Power we tailgate. Go. Now on paper, this boot space is actually pretty bad. 405 liters of boot space is nothing. However, in practice, it's actually pretty damn massive, man. Yeah, I think probably because we're reviewing the Abarth today as well. Oh, that's probably why, yeah. <laughs> what you don't see though is all the underfloor storage. And if you include that like you would in a Tesla Model 3's literage thing, then actually it's about the same. So pretty massive. You can also drop the rear seats really easily, get even more space. You've got a divider here, which is really smart. Stops things from rolling around. Really smart tailgate. Simply Good. clever. All right, let's check out the interior. Let's do it. Oh, 
<laughs> Sorry, let me put the car in park first. So inside the Polestar 2, it's gonna be a bit of a feedback sandwich in here. And I wanna start with what's good, cause there is a lot of good. First of all, Jacob, fit and finish. Listen to this. Oh, funk. Mm. It's a very nice thunk to it. Everything's built really nice and well. Soft touch materials in a lot of places. A lot of it is recycled materials. Sustainability is the name of the game and they do a good job in here. Because this has the plus package, it does get a few things though, which I don't love and would make me not get it. First of all, it's this sunroof here that has no cover to it. But guys, like I said, it's 38 degrees today. I can't stop sweating, even with the aircon on. There is so much heat radiating out of that. It's not funny, even though it is treated. There's a lot of heat coming from it. The other thing I don't love are these seats. These are Weave Tech seats. Um, they're a vegan seat, apparently. Great, uh, but they're made of this like wetsuitish material, kind of like denim almost, and it's not a breathable material, I found out. And I have such a sweaty, disgusting lower back after sitting in these seats. They're not cool, they're just heated. I'm sure it will do amazing in like colder climates, but here it's not working out for me in the summer. At, at least on the four days in Melbourne that it's hot. Yeah, and now in a Tesla Model 3 Highland, you do get cooled seats, standard, so. I think this really needs cooled seats uh, just to help with that ventilation. But complaining aside, this has been such a nice interior to be in. It's pretty much luxurious. Like there are some, you know, scratchy materials dotted around. I think there could be better use of storage. Like this is an EV at the end of the day. So having this big center console, you don't need it, but it is for the most part, very practical. So you've got a wireless charger here. You've got a couple of USB-C ports, a pretty massive glove box there too. Door bins are enormous. You have a Harman Kardon sound system as part of that plus package. It does sound very good. Down to things like really good placement of air vents, like up here in the dash, they just provide a very nice airflow to your face on a hot day like today. So that is very good. This shifter, just nice with a little Polestar logo illuminated. By the way, as part of the plus package, you get this little illuminated Polestar thing up into the roof and that is cool. You've also got a little bit of storage to the side of the center console, which is good. Back to practicality, you get one cup holder here in the center. And if you're like me and you wanna rest your arm in your normal driving position, then you've got to slide this armrest forward and now you don't have a cup holder. And if you want two cup holders, you just gotta put that all the way back and then you get a cup holder in there and now you've got nothing and you've just got hard plastic to rest your elbow on. It's just little design things like that that make me think that as an early product, which the Polestar 2 is for the Polestar brand, it could have been designed a bit better, but I'm really hopeful for their future products even if they are in a bit of trouble at the moment, um, that they've just received a billion dollar investment apparently, so there's that. I'll tell you what Polestar have done very well in here, man. And potentially better than Tesla, yeah, which is a big call. It's just like so intuitive to use this display here. It's a pretty massive display. It does have big bezels. It's essentially like an Android tablet. It is running Android. So it's got Google Maps built in, very much like a Tesla. But you can actually connect your iPhone through wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is there as well. But it's just intuitive, easy to use. The air conditioning controls are really easy to use as well. Same with this instrument cluster up in front of you. Again, no frills. You can have a full-size map in front of you if you want. And again, Google Maps, that's awesome. Don't get that in a Tesla. And although it's really not very customizable at all, there's about two screens you can see, that's all you need, minimalism, it's easy. You get in and go. There is no start stop button. You just put your foot on the brake, into gear, and you're, away you go. And then to shut off the car, you literally close the door and lock it. That's it. Let's check out the back seats. Alrighty, guys. Mm. That was a thump. It's quality. Feels really nice. In general, again, don't love the seats because it just doesn't work on a hot day like today. You know, I don't think they're thinking about the Australian climate when they're developing seats like this in, you know, Sweden. Pull that down, more wetsuit material. We've got three cup holders here. That's pretty funny. We've also got a couple of air vents here and a little hidey hole area there with a couple of USB-C ports. We've also got heated outboard seats when you go for that plus package. You've also got map pockets there too. Pretty massive door bins and quality doesn't actually take much of a hit back here. So it's actually a fairly quiet cabin in the back when you are just driving around. And again, it adds to that premium experience that you do feel when you're driving one of these cars around. But five foot 11, I don't have much leg room. Toe room is just non-existent at all. And headroom isn't the best, like it's okay, but you can easily whack your head against the side so there are some packaging things i think they could get better in here but again as they go on and they start to bring out more cars like their polestar 3 and polestar 4 which we'll be reviewing hopefully very shortly you, you've got something to look forward to. yeah i mean i wish they there was a little bit more space in the back otherwise it's perfect it's okay but then you know someone in the front's got a cup holder no no one in the middle all right jacob let's launch it let's do it Alrighty, Daddy Jacob. It's the bloody ESC Sport Mode Polestar launch. We're gonna launch it. Fist me. They say 6.3 seconds. What will it really be? Why does my mum not love me? 
Oh, oh, come on, come on. Ooh. Oh, it's actually pretty quick. It is pretty quick. Oh! Zero to 105.96 seconds. That's incredible. That's pretty damn good. All right, Sub let's drive six. this thing normally. Okay. All righty. Driving the Polestar 2. I feel like a Polestar. That could be really misinterpreted, couldn't it? So, they actually facelifted this thing like a year ago, but it was mm. quite a mega facelift wow. in terms of the underpinnings. Sure. Okay, we've gone over this. The front didn't really change very much. No. Okay, the interior, it's got its compromises, but the way it drives... Oh. It's pretty smooth. Oh, it's very smooth. Oh. With some caveats. So let's go through what the changes are. First of all, bigger battery. 82 kilowatt hours. Mm, daddy's a little heavier. That's a big boy. That is a big boy. That's a big battery. They've also, thankfully, moved from a front wheel drive to a rear wheel drive setup. So this thing. It's a sports car. It's a bloody sports car. But it actually puts out a lot of power. 220 kilowatt of power, 490 newton meters of torque. You put your foot down, even at like higher speeds, it does well. Handling too. It is really good because one, it's a bloody EV. It's rear wheel drive, two, it's EV, oh. and three, it's got very <laughs> stiff suspension. I, I agree, but at the same time, it's super comfortable. When you're at these speeds, absolutely. It floats. But let me tell you, around town, it's a little bit on the stiffy wiffy you end. Feel okay? the pole. Yeah, you can feel the poles on the ground, okay? Oh, it picks up quick, man. It's a really oh. premium feeling car to drive. I gotta say, I'm very comfortable. And the range. You know what? Just the fact that you don't have range anxiety is worth it for me. We get, we're also driving the uh, Abarth 500E with 200 <laughs> kilometers of range. Let's just say that has probably the worst range of any EV, and this has probably the best range of any EV. <laughs> no, quite literally. Bit of a juxtaposition. This is 655 kilometers of WLTP. You won't get that, but you'll get like over 500 kilometers for sure. It's really good. Also, this thing handles really oh well. Let's God. put the steering feel into firm. Oh, huh. I'm how, firm. That's how I drive with my baby, not my actual Your baby. passenger princess. My passenger princess. Ooh, that steering feels pretty good. Much more direct now. I feel like you had to calibrate, recalibrate your... Ooh. Oh, okay, Verstappen. <laughs> Jesus. Thank you for the correct pronunciation of my name. Oh, oh my God. Oh, don't lose traction. <laughs> Remember, this is a rear-wheel drive. Do you know what, man? It's a nice car. And when you're just driving it casually, because there is no sport mode, right? You can change the steering feel, but there is no sport mode. It's so still a Volvo at the end of the day. It drives like a Volvo, yeah. yeah. It's, it's just like a nice Euro feel. It feels good. The adaptive everything. We'll turn it on. Oh, we pressed the right pilot assist. Oh, God. Of course, that is part of a package. You know, it does a good job at keeping you nice and centered when you're on the highway. Obviously not here. But... Not, not here. But it is actually a very good system. I just, why is that an optional extra? I don't know. On a car of this magnitude. Yeah. And price. I feel yeah. like it shouldn't be an optional extra. But anyway, oh. we're a saucy, bloody corner, so who cares? Tickle me. And now handshake me. Ooh, sweaty palms. Here we go, Dad. <laughs> Oh, rear wheel drive. My liver's in my ass. You can get a performance all wheel drive, but you don't need it. Oh my God. This is more than enough. Oh, oh Kia Stinger, slow down. Whoa. Whoa. That's pretty. Holy crap. For a car without any sort of. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Proper LS. Oh. oh, come on. That felt like a rear wheel drive for a second yeah. there. <laughs> Look, man, for a car that's not claiming to be performance, it gives you plenty, it's got good range. It charges pretty fast. Like, it's going up as well. It's like 180 or 190 kilo. Well, maybe it's even 200 now. It's it's a good car. So we get to our final thoughts. I think so. Alrighty, Daddy Jacob. Final thoughts on the Polestar 2 facelift. You first. I think they've done a bloody bang up job. They really have. I'm not going to say that, you know, it blows the Tesla Model 3 out of the water because I don't think it does. In fact, I think that that is better value. However, if you are looking for a really good alternative to something like the Tesla Model 3 or the even more, to be fair, value packed BYD seal, then absolutely the Polestar should be on your consideration list. It is a gorgeous car and it drives so much better now that it's rear wheel drive, got that bigger battery pack and you still get a nice Nice and functional interior, even if it doesn't really agree with us on a hot day. All right. Totally. Let's uh let's say goodbye. Bye. <laughs>